Welcome to episode 26 of Antlia. What's Ermor doing here? He just hit Thaumaturgy 4. He will have Soul Slay online soon. Not a whole lot being reached at 4, though, as far as powerful spells. Now, all of these battles here are just raids against PD or no PD at all. We'll go ahead and check out a couple of them. I mean, this one at least has a Kuro Oni walking around amid the PD, throwing some fire, doesn't get to spit his poison before the Equite chop him up. And gentle reminder that Vanheim is rolling in. Now, as you see, Vanheim does have a single commander leading these units in the back, which means that if Ermor was to do something different than what he's been doing so far and script some, even just a few equite on attack rear command, while these units here get held off, I mean, this whole army could be routed pretty easily. So just something to keep in mind when you're scripting yourself, like if you ever see this, attack rear commands are very powerful against a script like this, especially because there's so many Van here's here. It'd be really nice to scatter these. Also, just taking out an exposed Vanadrot is pretty nice. This is a Soda Recruit capital only expensive unit, but we haven't seen Ermor doing too much scripting in this game, so I have a feeling he's not going to take advantage of it. Swallow chasing, isn't this kind of normal? Like a raptor gets too close to a little bird's nest and then they start pecking at it, trying to chase it off. Well, I guess there's a lot of war in this game, so every time they see it in Dominion's world, it'll more or less be accurate. <laughs> little counter raid with some Hastati and Retiari. I think overall Armor's been a little passive. Maybe he's just waiting to climb a little bit in research. I'm not really sure what he's doing, but look at all of these Hastati. He doesn't have a commander here to lead. Oh, nice. All right, I definitely think it'd be a good move for or Ermor to be applying some pressure back here because right now, Vanheim's just running rampant all over his southern territory. And I hate to even like I'm nitpicky, but I pretty much am. It's like he could just move through this barbarian territory to recapture it, a little bit of income. He's probably not going to lose many Hastati, if any at all, to this. And while this might seem like it's super bad for Ermor, and I mean, it's not good for Ermor, I'll give you a think about it. What is Vanheim going to do in the near future? Ermor has a ton of units. They're really powerful. He has a ton of mages, lots of forts. Vanheim doesn't have remotely enough numbers to do any sieging, so Ermor can afford to be a little bit passive like this. It's definitely not being passive over here, though. He's combining his whole army up here, and maybe he's going to make another attempt on Yomi's capital. Still, no scripting of his army here. This is really concerning. With the two thrones over here, I do think that taking on Yomi still is a very good priority. It's a very good thing to do. Like, if he was able to win this war, even with Vanheim running up his ass, and he does have a lot of armies over here. That's direct access to the two thrones over here. He has access to this one up here, as well as this one. He already owns this throne. This one wouldn't be out of the question to reach. It's just a matter of winning this war fast. And right now, it just does not look like it's going to be fast. Uh, Katis has received a peace offering from Agartha. At the same time, Agartha is invading a couple of his provinces. Let's check out this one because there are some mercenaries present. So a little more interesting than just against some PD. Oh, Katis actually did a decent amount of province defense here. Mercenaries getting fried by the mine blasting instead of the light infantry. I wonder what drove them to target the mercenaries and not the PD. Agartha lost some long deads and some clockwork soldiers. I didn't even notice that she was using these. Exhaustion. Like the opposite of reinvigoration. These things are sweet though. They're very resistant to all kinds of stuff. They're a good brick wall unit in some situations. Katis is also raiding Agartha though and all man trolls. Okay, it's not too many of them. The last blitz I was playing I got attacked by like 25 of these on my brand new province. It's pretty early on in the game too. That hurt. I don't know if anyone reconquered that province the entire game unless you've got certain kinds of mages or some way to overwhelm them like just take so many losses fighting trolls but it's not all bad he did manage to get a good deal on some gems man those trolls right in the middle of everything he's just gonna try to wipe them out right away the attack density on these lizard warriors should be just fine but yeah this is obnoxious right here right into someone's cap circle hey want peace uh sure enough katis is saying that yeah i will agree to peace but you need to give up province 11 dunster right here so i'm glad he does recognize that Agartha really has no business owning this province if they are going to be at peace with each other. I was worried that he was going to agree to peace and just let her have that. No capital recruitment on this turn. Not a whole lot of recruitment going on this turn. I'm not sure what he's spending his gold on. In fact, I'm baffled as to what he's spending his gold on. He's getting a lizard shaman here and just a few falchioneers and a lizard lord. I guess he is kind of high upkeep right now. <laughs> he's twice burning sit in cannon, but not Zilamu. I'm excited to see what he starts building when he hits construction four, and what his plan is now that he is probably going to have peace with Agartha. I'm presuming Agartha is going to let him have this. He's not that big, so he's going to have to figure out something for war. He's probably going to have to knock out this province pretty soon before someone else does. But Katiz has been on Agartha in defense for so long in this game that I've kind of had trouble thinking of him in any other context. So it will be cool to see what free Katiz is like. And the same goes for Agartha, where 
where she's gonna go now that she's not fighting the lizards anymore. She's climbing up Evocation, hasn't gotten that far yet. Poof, three magic sites in one turn. A couple of magic oaks. Got some air gems and a deep crevasse. Nothing too exciting, but three more gems a turn than she wasn't getting before. Oh, she's picking up Sinextro here, or at least is attempting to, with her pretender. That's a little freaky right there. Remember, this thing is a uh, high encumbrance. This used to be Ermor's province right here. He just never bothered to recapture it, even though Javelinists are, in my opinion, really good against barbarians. Agartha's building up here, which makes me think think that maybe Agartha was thinking about invading Ermor from this direction. If she did do that, you know, just lack of scouting, she'd probably run into Vanheim pretty quick, if not just bump with Vanheim. But Vanheim has most of this. There's a little line of Ermorian territory going this way. But yeah, I'm thinking she might be thinking about pouncing on Ermor. Might explain some of this movement too. Moving this down into Forest of Pine. <laughs> it looks like she'll be summoning Crave Crabs for a while. Fomoria is being counter-raided by Shibalba. Shibalba's armies, though fairly small are pretty awesome. Ozzolotl's really powerful sacreds and some beast bats. Bunch of mages around to bless them as well as spam their strange national spells. There's not them. There's just one PD. I just like looking at these sacreds. Ozzolotl's are some of the coolest looking units in the game. Jaguar with bat wings. Got a completely different thing going on in this province. Bunch of huge ass scorpions against one PD. So this is I think an effective amount of province defense in like volatile territory where you're at war with somebody. Just one, don't need to waste any gold on, you know, knocking it up to six or more. It's, it's probably just gonna get counter rated. But at least if you throw a gold piece, you'll see what your opponent is moving if they do recapture some territory. So it's kind of like a, a one gold scout in a sense. It's, it's kind of weird, but definitely worth doing. And I don't think it's worth usually putting more gold into something. So I've definitely PD dumped against certain kind of thugs or raiding parties that I knew a 20 or 30 PD would smash just because I I had the gold and would rather put a stop to it that way. Yeah, fairies need to burn. Ask any Irishman or Scotsman, they'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, Fomori is backing right off from this. He just does not have the armies here to deal with what Shababa is putting forth. He really needs some research to, oh, he's going up to Evocation 6, that is cool. Wailing Winds is a super cool spell. It's almost certainly what he has in mind here. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to get some of what Shababa is fielding to route. Sacred Scorpions have decently high morale. Then you go to something like an Ozzolotl, and it's almost unroutable. But still, something better to have switched on than switched off. But Fomoria is in full-blown research mode. He's turtling for a moment, letting Shababa rampage around over here. I don't blame him. He took a really bad fight here recently and needs to reorganize. He has by a long shot the economic advantage. He's no longer receiving pressure from Yomi. He's not receiving pressure from anyone else. It'd be really hard for Shababa to stabilize and really easy for Fomoria to pick up an even bigger death ball and swing back over into Shababa's territory. But every time Shababa gets another sacred scorpion. Shababa gets a little bit freakier, so the sooner the better. Look at all these labs. Vanheim is on the offensive, uh, just a sectarian movement event, continuing his raid into Ermor's territory. Funnily enough, he's stealthing these into this province. I think maybe he doesn't want to bump that Dione right there. But raiding over here with his big long line of Van Heers, and this is cool, I can't wait to see this. Three Van Jarls with lightning spears. Oh, this is probably a little bit overkill. Wait, how are they scripted? Oh, they're not. Ugh. Well, it's fine, you know, there's probably nothing here in terms of PD, but like what would happen if it bumped into Agartha, you know? You gotta be careful. It's a Vanyarl. These things are so powerful when you script them. You could throw them in against six PD naked, and only very rarely they'll lose against that, as long as you script them. But he doesn't really have the correct research pass. I'd want Alteration 3 and Enchantment 2 before I started doing that. Mist form, flight, maybe tack on mirror image or air shield, depending on what you're fighting, along with, of course, the blessing. Attack rear, that'll slaughter most province defense. You don't even need to gear them for that. Probably should just to help protect them. But yeah, they mess stuff up. So something Vanheim really needs to think about if he wants to like win this war. Maybe he's just thinking about taking some territory and suing for peace. But if he wants to like conquer Ermorian territory, including like forts, he needs to be able to siege. Got what? Like 39 units here, 19, 16. He's gonna need to think about siege chef. And like, you know, right now it's not a pressing need because he still does have to eliminate some armies before he thinks about sieging, which he seems to be avoiding any direct confrontation with that, and I don't blame him. You do have serfs that you could spam out decently, which just kind of sucks because they're a crappy unit. Got some slingers on hand. What you really want is something that you can spam out, but he hasn't found any death gems, so no random 
animation. Blackhawks are pretty expensive for Siege Chaff. Can always go the mercenary route, but that's also expensive. Cool, father, cool. Uh, we'll see what he's thinking. If he does get attacked by Ermor from the south, look at this. He actually has a decent amount of highly effective units building up on his capital. Some Heardmen and some Vanhirs against what, just some Astadi? That's gonna be pretty powerful. But if Ermor's fielding a lot of mages, where it starts to get iffy. <laughs> Lots of speculation. Feels like the game is in a bit of a state of flux right now. Yomi has received a very welcome message from Vanheim informing him that he is in fact attacking Ermor right now. And Yomi has received a pretty in-depth message from Oceania talking about why he's not fighting with Ermor. And that's it. He is very scared of Agartha. He's also informing Yomi that Vanheim is attacking Ermor. And this is something to notice here is that Ermor right now is perceived as the big threat, but Agartha is pretty big. And if Agartha turns and takes over Ermor, Agartha is going to become the big threat. I already think Agartha is kind of secretly the big threat because she's not being as bothered right now. She's got some really terrifying death balls fielded with tons of mind blasters, a lot of mages, stacking up research fairly decently, and has lots of highly capable sieging forces. So I think if she coordinated correctly, she could definitely conduct a successful invasion of some neighboring territory. Oh, still not quite at that construction for a goal. Really important goal for this nation as it lands you quite a bit of gear for your Dione. <laughs> Kona Hatengus. That's funny. These things are sweet. These are their big long red noses right there. I actually don't like summoning these that much. Like they got one little lightning bolt they can throw and then they fly and just splat on your opponents because they have no protection. Another problem I have with them is you know, they just cost air gems or I could even just say they cost gems. I really don't like spending gems as Yomi on summons other than maybe a Shikome are actually pretty good when applied correctly. Daitengu is probably fairly decent in the early ages though. I don't really see a point as summoning these as Jomon but with Yomi yeah it's a little bit tempting right there. He's still moving this Dione around all over Ermor's territory. Only a matter of time before this thing steps onto a big fat army. And he's got no problem trying to wipe out Ermor's commanders with attack rear commands using his bird. Though not this time as Ermor is forming up all of his forces right here. I presume he's going to move on to his capital. Yomi is patrolling with a whole bunch of troops. So if we do see that, which may be a couple turns from now, I'm imagining it's going to be a very entertaining battle. I just wish Yomi had more Dione. They're so cool. Shababa getting a bit of a nod from Fomoria after that victory against him. 1,003 gold from Distill Gold. Very, very needed. Let's see what he's buying with that gold. <laughs> One of these big old mages with a decent spread of paths. I was hoping he'd get another Onaki. These things are very expensive though. And Ah It's still summoning Sacred Scorpions, grabbing some skeletons, and is moving in on Fomoria right here with his little Ozzolotto Beast Bat army. Lots of scouting too. So he's going to know exactly what Fomoria is moving in with, unless Fomoria is doing some weird stuff with Nemedians that are stealthy. Uh, we, of course, know he's not doing that. But a very effective use of scouts right here. It's already got plenty moving around the rest of Fomoria's territory. This is a very good habit. He even got eyes over on uh, Yomi, and he'll know if anything kicks these wolves out to the west of his territory. Information is really important in this game. Gosh, look at all those. So icky. He's only getting one Earth Gem a month at the moment, though. So his sacred scorpion farming is going to be fairly limited, and it makes regaining some of his lost territory, say this province here with the quicksand and raspberry woods with the singing stones, very important. And Oceania has casted Grow Fortress, a lake of God, what a cool name for a lake. Got a full-blown fortification, and that's not all. Check this out, four magic sites in Embracer, and one of them is a kelp fortress. Pomp, free fort, right on the frontier here. I imagine he's feeling safer now. Jesus, 40 PD here, 40, wow. It's funny, because I mean, I might be wrong, but I don't think Agartha's thinking about invading Oceania at all right now. He, of course, doesn't have this overhead perspective that we have when viewing this game, but it is a good thing to note here. He's losing out a lot of mage turns, including very important mage turns with his pretender on patrolling against a threat that doesn't really seem to be there. I might eat my words in a turn here when Agartha just suddenly moves everything in onto Embracer, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, two more commanders off of the throne here, and now he's risking an attack. Man, Oceania is just swarming with infrastructure here. He's going to need to expand on the land somewhere somehow, though, if he's going to have any chance of remaining competitive. His scales aren't quite good enough for some crazy expansion of wealth just sitting in the pond. No, he needs to get big to be able to compete with whoever else is getting big. And, you know, he doesn't have any thrones in here. But, you know, if he's going to take one, two, three, four, five thrones to win, wow, that's a mountain to climb right there. He's going to have to start somewhere. So why not 
Godwoods. Sun's been turned 27, bit of a slow turn, but people are starting to hit those research goals that make them start throwing mages into battles more. I mean, we've already been seeing plenty of mages involved in Fomoria's and Shabalba's war, but this has been more out of necessity. I don't think either of them were necessarily happy to be using their mages on the battlefield the way they were. But once people start hitting fives and sixes in their research, that's when the big guns start coming out with their wizards. And I think at that point, people will be a little more keen on taking large fights with their armies. And we'll see if any of those are coming up in the next episode.